If I could slow down time like in Max Payne, I'd be jumping all the time. That would get pretty annoying, though. <sighs> like you would know. You probably do know. Let me guess there's a power that you could do. Yes, sir. Alright, well, I'm ready. Do it for me. Are you sure? It can get very annoying. I'm very sure I want my slow motion. Please, thank you. You know you don't have to close your eyes, right? Alright, well, then just do it then. Alright, okay. Well? Obviously, you have to jump around, idiot. Okay, okay, I get you. Here it goes. Even though, you know, little pauses. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah, enjoy it, you bastard. I'm back at the back, back now. Been gone for way too long. I'm back at the back, back now. Got so many games to play, dog. I'm back at the back, back now. Don't be cold, express my dog. I'm back at the back. Fucking What is up guys, it is Robert of Gaming with me and welcome to Back at the Backlog, the series where we take a look at the games that I recently beat off my backlog. Today's episode is on the game Max Payne. This is a franchise that I have no history with. I just heard it to be one of gaming's best trilogies ever, which that and alongside who developed it, Remedy and Rockstar Games, had me curious to check it out for myself. Max Payne was released on July 24th, 2001 for PC in the US. It was developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by a Gathering of Developers. I played the original Xbox version that was released later that same year, published by Rockstar Games. Awesomely enough, this is one of those original Xbox games that you could play on the Xbox Series X, which is where I played it with its crisp resolution and locked frame rate. Is this start of the trilogy any good? Well here we are 23 years after its original release. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the story first. We follow the character Max Payne, a former NYPD detective who tries to solve the murder of his wife and child. It's definitely a unique plot for a video game, showcasing this story in a very cinematic neo-noir style. It's a darker tale with slick comic strip style storytelling for cutscenes. I thought it was immediately engaging the story, and as someone who can very much overlook a story in video games due to very many mediocre ones that are just trying to work it into gameplay, I was pleasantly surprised. Right off the bat, visually this game is really good. I really like the gritty and dirty New York City as it's not often we see a location like this in games. There's something about using photos and placing them as the textures of the world just makes it still good today to me. Of course games did this for technical reasons, but this is still used today just in a much more advanced way. So to see the beginning of this technology, I just think it's super interesting and impressive. It is even used on the characters with Sam Lake's iconic face pasted onto Max Payne and it is pretty hilarious. I would honestly love developers to do stuff like this again. Me too, man. It would be pretty unique with some still images of somebody's face. It would have that classic charm. It's cool. The world perfectly captures this crime movie atmosphere unlike really any other game I've ever played so far. Then with a comic strip approach to cutscenes, it further shows the uniqueness of this game and world with some genuinely great voice acting for most characters including Max Payne himself. Max Payne is a linear third person shooter in which you'll explore different locations and take out a lot of bad guys in a very badass way. This game definitely stood out with its story and atmosphere but the biggest reason is its movement. The game uses the mechanic of bullet time. This is where you can slow down time and perform some genuine action movie stuff like the Matrix. You are able to jump around in all angles, slowing down time, taking out enemies. 
This is the big thing about the gameplay loop for this game and yes, it is awesome. It was so awesome that I was surprised that games nowadays don't really do it. Although here we are in 2024 and the new Call of Duty Black Ops 6 literally does this now. That's how ahead of the game Remedy was with Max Payne. Now the movement may look cool but it obviously has to control good in order to be good and well, yes it does. Bullet time controls perfectly and it's so impressive how they got it right on their very first attempt. It never feels awkward as to what the angle of my jump is, they genuinely nailed it. Although the very first thing I did was turn off aim assist. The aim assist was just too commanding over my aim I felt, having it off felt a lot more flexible especially because of the way bullets work in this game. Awesomely enough, you can visually see your bullets travel towards your opponent and vice versa making it where you have to take into account movement. You might not want to aim directly at the enemy but instead a little bit ahead if they're moving which they do quite often. I really enjoyed seeing the bullets release in real time as it added some strategy to what typically would be a standard shootout. That strategy already sets it apart from so many shooters out there. Then being able to constantly slow down time in midair jumping around propels the uniqueness even higher. It is incredibly satisfying to perform kills while in midair. It feels great to constantly do it and that's good because that's how you'll be taking out enemies the majority of the game or at least I did. I finished the whole game without using bullet time once. No jumping, no slowing down time. What? Why would you do that? Give myself a challenge. But you missed out on like the biggest part of the game. Can't be that big if you don't have to do it. By technicality you'd have to do it but that would make it so tough and painful for, for no reason. Exactly. The moment to moment gameplay is action packed due to really solid level design. There isn't much variety in what you're doing but the different locations and hectic scenarios are its variety. You'll be going through the city blocks of snowy New York, traveling through the subway, making your way through rundown hotels filled with drug addicts, running out of an exploding building, and even a nightclub that holds this huge satanic cult. Yeah, there's definitely a good amount of surprising moments that keep you on your toes. There's no real repetition in level structure. Each location is genuinely unique and makes each stand out as more memorable. There's even a couple of these drug induced nightmare sequences that I definitely wasn't expecting which was pretty cool. It replays Max Payne's tragic loss over and over again in a spiraling descent to madness. Pretty damn unique. Although there are some awkward platforming moments in this section too that don't really work with its controls. In one of these nightmare sequences Max Payne breaks the fourth wall and talks about how he's in a video game with him breaking down the entire HUD with him saying in his voice, Funny as hell it was the most horrible thing I could think of. I genuinely wasn't expecting that and was wondering if there was more to that as an actual twist of the game. But no since he was all drugged up it was just a hallucination of his but definitely was very funny and unexpected. Then in terms of the enemies that fill these locations you'll encounter a bunch of the typical looking mobsters until later on when you start to run into more professional killers. It generally can get tough when there's a lot of enemies trying to overwhelm you. These enemies don't change their spawn location so when you die it's just another shot at redemption. There can be a bit of bullshit sometimes where an enemy starts shooting instantly when you enter a building with no time for reaction which can be ridiculous. However you get over that since you know their locations instantly aiming for someone once you enter a room that you previously got destroyed in. Of course there's a variety of guns from assault rifles to rocket launchers in your arsenal that you'll be carrying around. All the weapons feel nice but also different in terms of bullet spray and damage, really making it where you'll have a favorite out of all of them. A major cool thing is that Max carries all of these at once. You don't have to leave any weapon behind, just keep on stockpiling and using them. New guns are given to you throughout the game with some of my favorites being a little later on. You get plenty of ammo for every weapon although if you just stick to one you'll eventually run out of ammo forcing you to pick something else which was never a bad thing. Throughout the journey you'll run into several boss battles. These boss battles were really just enemies and survive way longer than typical enemies and are also just a lot more aggressive. The most memorable absolutely being the leader of the satanic cult who yells you'll die over and over again in the most sadistic way possible. These bosses really do last a while and will take you out quickly if you aren't fast enough and careful. You really do have to perfectly shoot in these battles with no major mistakes when dodging. Whenever it comes to health you can recover whenever you like with painkillers found around the journey but you also don't want to get caught without at least one of them because the game gets a lot tougher without some health supply. That's what the painkillers were for? Yeah. I had no idea. I just 
Never used one. Are you saying you didn't even die once? Surprisingly? Yeah. Damn, that's that's insane. These guys should be here, Kylo. Yeah, okay, I don't even know what he said. I wasn't listening. He said you played a stupid way for your first time, dumbass. I didn't hear what Nipple just said either, by the way. As the story progresses, you start to learn some major plot points towards the end of the game, which I'm now going to talk about just to let you know! While in this bunker, Max Payne discovers that this abandoned drug named Valkyra was used for US soldiers to boost stamina and morale, but was poorly received in results. This is when this person named Nicole Horn started illegally continuing the making of this drug, and Max's wife accidentally found out about it. Well, because of this, Horn sent agents to kill Max Payne's wife and her family so word doesn't get out. She wasn't able to kill Max, and now Max truly knew who did this to his family and is out to get Horn. He takes a trip to Acer Corporation where Horn was at and delivers some badass lines before your final stop begins. I had a bullet with Nicole Horn's name on it. I had 10,000 bullets with the hag's name on them. She had ultra high tech security systems, enough mercenaries and weaponry to start World War III. There was no fear. He was not joking about this giant skyscraper having a ton of mercenaries and admittedly I do feel it was too many. This whole last level is a little too chaotic with some bullshit enemy placements. I mean right away there are three dudes from far away shooting some rocket launchers at the same time killing you almost instantly as soon as a pixel pops from the corner. It's ridiculous and while that's probably the most annoying enemy placement, there's definitely other spots that are a little too much I feel. It doesn't help that it is quite long your first time around at almost an hour until you reach horn. Still a fun level overall, just needed to relax on the enemy placement. Reaching Horn isn't really reaching her as she continues to run away, calling more agents to attack. Horn attempts to escape in a helicopter as the game shows this massive antenna on the building moving in the winds. At first I was trying to open the doors between Horn and I, but it wasn't working. So then I attempted to shoot one of the wires holding up the antenna, but got blown up, which was confusing. Well, apparently after one cutscene, some agents get spawned like right behind you because, of course. My third try of just... Simply shooting a wire was fine and just as the enemy spawned behind me, one of them shot what I'm assuming was a rocket launcher or a grenade, missing me and instead hitting a wall, killing the four of them. That was damn hilarious and really worked out in my favor without even taking one shot. I then shoot another wire thinking the wind would take it down, but no, a cutscene triggers having the helicopter fly away and kill Max. Well, next try I look up at the antenna and think, well, I could try to shoot at it directly, so I do with the rocket launcher, and there it goes. The antenna falls down, taking out the helicopter, crushing it to the ground level. Max Payne looks over the skyscraper with his task finally over. Horn is killed, and his family is avenged. The NYPD finally corner and get to him, and Max surrenders. He's arrested, but all he could do in the back of the police car is grin. Then, the credits roll. That was a pretty cool ending. There's no final boss showdown, instead it's more of an environmental puzzle to take out Horn in a much more unique way which was really interesting. Seeing him have closure and the only way a revenge tale could give him was very satisfying. That was Max Payne. What a fantastic, memorable journey. I can see why this is considered a classic as it still feels innovative even today with its awesome bullet time movement. The unique approach to storytelling and voice acting, great atmosphere with its music and looks set it apart from many other third person shooters I've played. It's up there on my list of favorite shooters that I've ever played, truly. The only frustration is the occasional enemy placement in the final level unfortunately features a bit too many instances of annoyances in that department. Other than that though, it's just a really well designed game with a very immersive world. Overall, I'm going to give Max Payne a... Jumping around in slow motion makes anything better. Out of 10. What an awesome game. I'm definitely looking forward to playing Max Payne 2, and I'm curious to see if they could somehow top this one. Max Payne is supposed to also get a full-blown remake from Remedy at some point, and I'll be curious to see how that'll be when it releases, but regardless, this original will forever be cemented as an all-time classic. That'll be for today though, thank you so much for watching. Have you played Max Payne? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you all next time. Max Payne was an awesome revenge story with innovative movement, but it is officially out of the backlog.
take it back, Finn. I don't want any more. Put me back in normal motion. I didn't know it was going to be like this. I thought it was just going to be jumping around, but falling, I can't even fall normally. I, I can't play basketball normally anymore. That, it kind of makes sense. I get that. I can't do a push-up. I can't fall asleep. Night times are double the length. They're like 16 hours, but I don't feel it's horrible. It's horrible. No, I don't. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. Take it. Remove this from me. I did tell you it would be annoying. Yes, yes, I fucking heard you. Just change me, please. Seriously. Okay. There you go. I've never been so happy to be so mediocre. I hope you learned your lesson to not mess with time. Yeah, yeah, words of wisdom, whatever. Look, we got the next game to play. Look at this. Ben! Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I have to do those too good. Which of the two games are we playing? Um, second one.